Will the looming injury crisis send oil stocks higher? Or does the dollar have other plans? Answer those questions and more on Sunday Night Charts. We take a look at charts to help you with the training week ahead. I'm your host, Steve Ambiner, and thanks for joining me again on Sunday. Moving average colors on your screen. The 21 day is red, 50 days in green, 100 days in blue, 200 days in tan. Price versus a month. Price is a general direction. Prices are ahead. Momentum is a red change. A bullish indicator for both is positive. A bearish indicator for both is negative. Momentum often, but not always, leads price. Technical analysis attempts to determine where buyers and sellers are at. Resistance is a level buyers can't break and support is a level sellers can't break or resistance is where sellers are at and support is where buyers are at. Technical analysis does not predict prices. It can be used to determine the risk of trade, help with time and trade and provide direction of the path of least resistance. Charting offers possibilities, not probabilities and not certainties. And let me tell you what a difference a week makes because we've got a lot more red as again, crude oil sense goes higher. The dollar's moving higher. The market, well, doesn't seem to like either of those. Let's take a look at the S&P 500 symbol, SPY, now switching bearish on the 50-day moving average across both price and momentum. This is not a good sign as we see it also cross below all the key moving averages, a 9, 21-day, 50, and 100. We're now below where it was a month ago, so one-month momentum is negative and falling. However, for long-term equity bulls, not much to worry about in the longer screens, a 3, 6, 9, 12-month momentum, all positive still and rising but let's look at the charts and see what we can see with the SPY because you know I do not want to suggest for a moment this thing could ever go down because it seems not to and you can see when we have the volume profile line enabled here over the last six months there's major support the most shares traded down here at uh, 416 so if there was a further sell-off in the S&P 500, there's massive amount of support here at 416. Does that mean we can't hold here? Well, you can see it's holding this chunk of volume uh, right here in the 434, 435 range. And it's been sold there. Buyers have eagerly stepped in. But worst case, at least for the moment, if it did dip down, well, there's plenty of support there. Although I'm sure we'll see into next week, the bulls will want to take this higher, but corporate share buyback blackouts are going to hamper their plans a little bit. So far, haven't heard them too much, but I heard them a little more. Let's move over to tech stocks. And that with that, we got the NASDAQ 100 QQQ, also flipping bearish on price on the 50 day moving average, now below all the, the 9, 21, and 50 day moving average. One moment momentum where, compared to where it was a month ago is now negative and falling. But again, is this really a big deal or is this just more of a symptom of corporate share buyback blackouts uh, taking a little momentum off of the market? And well, with QQQ, we have a much different picture here trying to find support at the 100 day moving average. At least it did so on Friday. You see in blue, held that, came below, but buyers bid it back up. Now, what do you see up here with the volume profile at 366.88? What is that telling you? Well, this is a sell zone. We previously identified it as a sell zone. Prices jumped a bit above it and came right back down. Sellers were there. Support for the QQQ remains down in the 336 range. If this doesn't hold, which it can, it can certainly hold price here, but if it doesn't watch for mechanical selling of computerized trading models as momentum wanes and it starts to head lower. Let's continue to move on to the small caps, which may give us, you know, maybe a clearer picture of where the big caps are headed. And we've seen a lot of red on the Russell 2000 from IWM and well, not, not as red as before, 21 day price now trending lower, turning bearish, 100 day moving average, still headed higher, flipped higher, now bullish. Uh, mixed bag on the moving average above the 9 and 50, but below the 21 and 100. So you, know, you could you could flip a coin and come out a winner either side of that. Uh, one momentum flipping negative and falling along with the six months. So compared to where it was one and six months ago, price is now heading lower. Or where it was three months ago, it was indeed having higher. Remember, most computer algorithms from a momentum perspective, look at the six-month window. So do keep that in mind. And let's take a look at IWM continuing in this kind of no man's land where buyers and sellers are duking it out. We have the sell zone above, we have the buy zone below, and they keep getting tighter and tighter in this battle. You see all the major moving averages are converging. This is fairly unusual. You don't tend to see this uh, on a sideways pattern where you have the 200 day coming up, 50 day, 
and 121 at the same spot right at that massive volume profile line you can see where this battle is being fought we can zoom out over the past year it's unchanged so clearly the sellers are above uh, 222 the buyers are below the only question is who's going to win this battle and at the moment this is what's probably hurting those large caps and i told you if small caps don't break out the large caps will come back down lower uh, this still remains again a no call zone your personal opinions may vary uh, until it breaks out of the sell zone above or the buy zone below uh, this is not something you can trade too much of, but if you're in a short term, you can look for these bounces and try to hit it between those. But from a more long term investment perspective, uh, there's not much to look at, but that's giving you a picture of why there's weakness in the large caps. Let's move on to the transportation sector. And it's pretty ugly too. Price and momentum across the 2150 and 100 day moving average is still bearish, trending lower, slowing down. So when you see bearish on price, it means price is headed lower. When you see momentum on bearish, it means the rate of change is slowing and heading lower. Could be negative as well. In an uptrend, slowing momentum uh, means it's just the rate of change is slowing. In a downward trend, it means it's headed lower. Uh, looking at the moving average is now below the 21-day moving average, flipping back on that. Uh, the other momentum screens, a one and three month, negative and rising. It's usually a good sign. Uh, Six-month momentum still negative and following. No change there. But remember, transportation, it's why we look at this. It also tends to lead the large caps and let's zoom out on this one year chart just to give you some picture here you can see this volume profile line that looked like it was acting as support remember it popped up there and i, and that, I think i said about a couple weeks ago that it was hard to argue that this was not acting as support well apparently that was wrong because now it's acting as resistance and you can see again this is just where the battle is being duked out and right now everything above th 250 is getting sold let's zoom out back out to that one year chart just so you can see there isn't a lot here if the buyers run out of steam you're looking at a price move down to 219 that's your next level of support it will start building support as early as 231 uh, with the bulk of it at 219 so right now uh, the chart on iyt looks bearish looking at the volume profile uh, hard to argue against that that would again tell you where the large caps are likely headed. Let's move on to one of our headline topics, the energy sector XLE going bullish price, meaning price is rising, momentum bullish, meaning the rate of change is increasing, is now above all its key moving averages. Six month momentum, where it, compared to where it was six months, is now rising above that. Three month momentum, negative and, and rising. I mean, this, this went from almost all red at one point to all, all green. And remember when you see all red, uh, start looking for opportunity, but XLE was a tough one to call because it shot out of the gate and came up higher. There was it, we talked about how this volume profile line was looking like where the buyers were at. Now, how did we get that opinion? Well, we look at the same chart in crude, and we see that the volume profile line again, where most shares are being traded at 68, tells you where the buyers are at. They, they were as low as 62, up high as the 68, and they drove out the sellers. Crude prices headed higher, and the likeliness when you have a commodity moving higher, well, the stocks are going to follow. They certainly did. Well, now, what does that mean as far as where crude goes? Well, crude's got a lot of resistance. And then now you can see this left shoulder head, right shoulder patterns being invalidated. So you can, uh, we can practically take that neckline off. But where is the next destination for XLE? 56.65. Now, does the dollar have some comment about this? Well, let's overlay. Uh, the DXY here just so you can see and you can do this with your own charting software as well where you can overlay two symbols and we'll of course look at the dollar in a little bit so hang tight but let's we gotta turn off the volume profile to see that and nope that did oh I forgot to put the dollar sign in there that's why gotta have the dollar sign in front of DXY so dollar DXY there you go so it's pretty rare, although it's not impossible, uh, where you see the two rising together and or falling together. But normally they trade fairly inversely with each other. So is the rise of the increase in the dollar going to spell the end of this crude rally? Well, it's entirely possible. You can see coming in here, they rallied together and then they, they've been falling together and they're kind of breaking apart that 
in going back into late May. So there are times they can move together, but generally the dollar will, of course, reign supreme and keep an eye out on it as we try to clear uh, this line out of here. So we can go back to the volume profile and say that you're looking at an upside potential here that XLE is going to have to break is this 55 range. That's going to be a big challenge for it. That's where 55, 56 were the sellers were at before, but look for it to make that move in early trading next week. It, I mean, it's got momentum is all over that thing. So, but keep an eye on the dollar. If the dollar keeps trending higher, well, that will be bearish for crude. How about the financial stocks? Remember, these tend to go up when bond prices go down. Bonds have been battered as uh, the debt ceiling looks to be an issue. If you missed my opinion on that, head over to my blog uh, or Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. You'll find uh, my post at Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can read more about that. Again, it's on my blog, on my website, stevevanmeter.com. Price and momentum still bearish. 50-day moving average momentum now increasing, so it's moving up at a faster pace. Above all the key moving averages, one more momentum negative and rising. That's usually positive signs. But again, we know bonds have got have been battered and what happened it came right down into this very tight buy zone where corporate share buyback machines have been running although now we're entering blackout uh, space it drove prices right into the, the sell zone and sellers are trying to hang on to that again we got this weird convergence of moving averages coming together 200 day way coming up uh, right now with the blackout periods I'd still say it's in the, the balls in the seller's hands to drive this lower, but they may get a, some aided boost by the blackout period. But if bonds take off, of course, we'll look at that. Uh, are bonds bullish? Then we'll get opinion on where perhaps financials are headed. Industrials looking pretty bearish. Price momentum bearish below all key moving average. One and three month momentum negative and falling. How about we take a look over at industrials and what do we see? XLI. Yeah, this is an ugly chart. If you want an another opinion on why the major uh, indices are struggling here, look at XLI. It's telling you this is breaking lower. That's going to tell you where crude and energy are likely to go next. And you can see selling has been over this 102. It's trying to hold this 200-day moving average. Failure to hold there, you're going to move all the way down to this $90 range uh, between, say, 87 and 90 it's looking pretty bearish for the industrials, so we'll just go with that, that it is indeed bearish and headed lower, as our indicators suggest. How about utility sector, which was not long ago, all green, and now price, momentum, both completely bearish below all the key moving averages, one month momentum, negative and falling. Utilities have been all over the map, I mean, just everywhere. And what do we see? Let's zoom out, because you can, you can really see there, there is this, um, if we talked about this last week, that if utilities kept going lower, they would run into a massive volume support line, and it did at 63, found buyers there. But look at the six month, let's zoom back in, and what do we see? Sellers right above there. So sellers are exiting positions as buyers right below. Uh, I would assume that these two sides are gonna duke them out. What do I think price would do? I think price is more likely to move up as it holds support and see if it can fend off where these sellers are at. So I would look for prices on utilities to move higher. Uh, but keep in mind, this thing is, is, is looking tired. But again, the buyers, even over the last two years, going back two years, and most shares traded right here at 63. So that's why I still think there is another attempt of higher utility prices coming just due to all those shares traded hands and holding there. They don't appear to be breaking. So that is good news. How about gold miners? I know everyone's really bullish on inflation and they can't figure out why mining stocks head lower. We've been pointing this out for a while that this thing is uh, goose is cooked. Uh, price, momentum, both bearish. At red across the board now. Red, everything is red. This is not pretty for the miners. Let's take a look while we're at it. We're going to look at, let's look at the juniors first. And we see GDXJ. We got a nice volume profile line above Current price suggesting the sellers have won out. Let's zoom out on the chart. We'll go to the two-year chart. And you can see where is GDXJ likely still got to come down to? Um, still going to come down to the, looks like probably in this low $36 range. If it breaks that, 
then this is where the real damage comes because you look back where all the people that have been buying over the years are and it breaks 36 and now you're down into the third low 30s let's zoom back in and head over to gdx which is again all red there's a lot of uh, there's a strong correlation between these two so it almost doesn't matter which one you prefer to look at. You're going to see a similar story. And you look at this now on a two-year chart and GDX most likely coming down into this $27 range. If it doesn't hold there, if the buyers don't defend that, well, you could see GDX uh, breaking through support, breaking through 26 and getting down into the 22 range. And while there's a lot of support there, potentially momentum would drive it lower and then you'd be looking at a pretty incredible buying opportunity. Um, and you can see GDX, the sellers did win out. This is not a vote of inflation. This is a vote of liquidity running out of the markets. So let's move on to emerging markets, which if you were bullish on the miners and you don't like the look of the chart, then you really want to be bullish on EEM because that will pull the mining stocks higher. What do you see in EEM? Price bearish, momentum bearish, below the key moving averages, one month momentum, not a big deal, flipping negative and falling. Three month momentum, flipping negative and rising. That's a little bit of hope. But this chart, equally not pretty either. Emerging markets telling you they are also likely to head lower. Let's zoom out to your chart. You can see they kind of rallied up, ran in. Everyone was got super bullish up here at 58. They're like, aha, this is it. This is the demise of the dollar. Emerging markets going to the moon. Sellers came in. And people are going to say this is a bull flag and they're going to say it until price gets all the way down to 44 where there's a major support at. If you look at the volume profile line, you can see the sellers are dominated up here. Liquidity is being drained out of the global economy without stimulus and everything and high energy prices. So it's telling you this is probably not a bull flag. It's probably a sign of disinflation and perhaps the economy rolling over into a double dip recession. How about we move on to high yield bonds, HYG. And this thing has been a terrible predictor of anything. Although when high yields give up, then you know the broad equity market's coming with it. So we'll be looking at this with a very curious eye price and momentum on the 21 day, now both turning lower, slowing down. Uh, 50 day price heading lower, Below all the key moving averages, again, this has not been an issue below the moving averages. One month momentum, three month momentum now turning negative and falling from where they both were over the last one and three months. Let's turn over to high yield bonds and see what is going on here. Let's zoom out. And very clearly, it's sitting on a one year volume profile line. Buyers came in. Buyers have been buying at 87 or looks like 90 uh yeah 87 19 like crazy so not a lot of concern there but over the last six months we zoom in you can see the sellers are above here uh just under 88 so where prices get up to 88 you get sellers get down to 87 you get buyers and so do we see any damage or any threats here not really you can see it's getting starting to get below Potentially, it's 200-day moving average, which has been bought. So no danger signs from HYG for the broad equity market, but it does need to go higher to validate the equity market turning around. So keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at, of course, Bond King's favorite sector, long-term treasury bonds. Loves duration. 21-day price momentum turning negative. Finally, went, went from green to red. 15-day moving average. Price head lower. Not a surprise. Bonds got whacked pretty hard last week. Below all the key moving averages, one month momentum now turning negative and falling. That's not a surprise. So does this is it? This is finally, once again, the bid for higher interest rates. Is this in for TLT? Well, not so fast. Uh, remember now we're looking at the last one year. There's a massive amount of price support at 139.46. So worst case, it comes down and finds where there are lots of buyers. Let's move into the six month window. And what do you see? The sellers reign supreme. They drove this down. I'll be really curious to see what the speculative positioning is in the coming, um, not this week, but the next week. But let's zoom in on the 10 day because this is interesting enough. And you see this bottom was indeed bought and it was bought up and you see the volume profile line that gives you an indication that this is indeed a bottom area for TLT. You gotta look at the volume, look at where shares are traded and it tells you that 
prices are more likely to come up into this 146. We'll just say almost low one four, below 147. That's the next destination to see if those sellers are still there. And if not, that it will gravitate back up toward this 149 where that volume profile line is. So uh, no, bonds aren't dead just yet. I know people are rooting against it, but uh, they're also betting against the Fed and the monetary system. So I wish them all the best with that. Uh, let's take a look at gold. We already know what to see here. Price is bearish on momentum. The 21 day and 50 swip flop. Swip, <laughs> switch positions. The nine day moving average is now above that. It's a nine month momentum is negative and rising. So we went from quite a bit of red to a little bit of green here. Maybe this is indeed the bottom in gold because we've seen when all my signals go red, you should start to look for a buying opportunity. And uh, when they're all green, maybe you should look for a selling window. Uh, and here you can see the volume profile line, 1810 sellers dominating anything in the $1,800 price range. And the buyers are defending the low 1700s. So at this point, it's up to the buyers. Look for price to get into the 1772 range and potentially get rejected there at the bottom end of this volume uh, chunk here. So keep an eye on that. Overall, what's the big picture on gold? Well, there's a topping pattern if you ever wanted to see one. This isn't a, a bull flag that everyone thought. It wasn't the bull flag of the century that everyone thought. It's not a bull flag that turned into a second bull flag. If this thing breaks, 1687, watch out. This thing is going to plunge. But then again, it makes sense if you start looking at the bigger picture of the economy. Is there finally some hope for silver? as we went from all red to a little bit of green uh, above the 90 moving average three and nine month momentum now turning negative and rising so showing a little bit of sign of life here remember we, it looks like silver is just in trouble looks like it's going to just blast off the, the chart here and head lower let's zoom out and what do we see it's hanging on look see where this bottom end of this volume is see how it's being bought here See if it holds that because, again, still silver, $18 a share, where it's likely headed. Buyers got to hang on to this, and they're not having much luck. So still the risk of silver down, but, even the, but on the short term, you've got a little momentum here. Maybe it can run up and tag its 50 or 21-day moving average. So I'll just say in the short term, silver has got a little bit of momentum behind it, but from the chart, Looks like 18 is where it's eventually going to get to. And how about King Dollar going almost all green across the charts? This is the biggest risk to the stock market, biggest risk to inflation, biggest risk to the U.S. economy is a, or not just a strengthening dollar, but one that gets out of control. Price bullish, momentum now bullish, above all the key moving averages. Everything except 12-month momentum, if positive and rising, 12 is negative and rising, which is a good sign for momentum if you like the dollar not a lot of people do right now and what do we see is starting to break out as i said once it gets over 94 then the next major move i mean at this point this is what's called a technical breakout everyone thought this was a top that was going to go lower it's turned out to be a bottoming pattern i'll show you the volume on uup in a moment which suggests and let's, let's zoom i gotta zoom out really far here because this has been a huge topping pattern. Let's go to the weekly. And what does this suggest that when you start to get over 94, where is the next destination for, for price? 97. So you can see every time it breaks this, this purple line where my mouse is, where does it gravitate to? 97. And when it's at 97, it gravitates down. So here it's 94 up to 97. So you can assume that's where it's likely headed. Now let's look out to UUP, see if we can find some volume here. And where would 97 be? It's going to be about 26 on UUP. So there's plenty of volume support below on the weekly, but let's move back in. Let's look at the two-year chart. You see there was that volume profile line that said at 94. That's was showing you. I mean, we've been talking about this for a long time. This is being bought. This is a bottom. And here you can see up here this $26 range. There's the next move that it makes. There's the bigger volume up here at 27. Let's move out to the five-year chart. And look at that. Over the last five years, most shares traded right here, validating that was indeed a bottom. And telling you, the dollar's headed higher. Danger zone for oil. Danger zone for the markets. Great news if you're bullish on bonds. And with that, we'll see you back on Monday for the show. Thanks for watching. I'm Steve Van Meter. Bye now. 
The content of this video is provided as educational informational. It's not intended by investor or the rights to share not to be construed as recognition or solicitation by fellow financial products, fine instruments, or to participate in any particular training strategies. We are West Bear by Steam Van Meter. Personal capacity, opinions expressed in the video that I do not reflect the view of Atlas Financial Advising or Steam Van Meter Financial.